Hey, what is up guys? In this video, we're going to look at my top five budget gaming processors for early 2020. We're gonna start with number five on the list and then we're gonna work our way down to my top favorite choice on place one. Now, at any point during the video, feel free to check out the links to each product mentioned. You'll find all that good stuff, including pricing in the video description down below. But yeah, without any further ado, let's look at number five. Coming in on number five on the list is the Ryzen 5. 2600. This is based on Sam Plus, came out in April of 2018, so it's been out for a little bit less than two years now, and a starting MSRP of 199 US dollars, but it has been selling with a 40% price reduction for a while now, and currently Amazon has it listed for 119 US dollars, which is a fantastic price considering the value you're getting here. So for $119 or $120 to be exact, you're getting a 6 core and 12 thread part with the base of 3.4 and boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz. Again, make no mistake here, this is not AMD's latest Sam 2 architecture, it's actually based on AMD's slightly older Sam Plus design and we're still on 12 nanometer. And what this means is that in terms of IPCs or instructions per cycle, it's going to be a bit slower compared to what both Intel and AMD currently offers, but considering what you're paying, you're getting tons of performance, but to be frank, this processor loses ground in 720p benchmarks, but in 1080p or 1440p, the biggest bottleneck will be the graphics card. Let's say you have $400 to spend on both the processor and the graphics card. In this case, this will allow you to spend almost $300 for the GPU. And for that kind of money, you can get an RX 5700. And this graphics card can run most games in 1440p and maxes out all games out there in 1080. And as far as I know, even Crisis. Now the best part about it, this processor is as future proof as it gets. It gets even better because because it also comes with a cooler, you don't have to spend anything extra on that. Now for $120, this is a steal, I cannot recommend this enough, you find a link down in the video description. Jumping further to number 4, we find the Ryzen. 5 3600. Sorry, 3600 is based on AMD's new 7 nanometer architecture called Sand 2 using the fantastic shiplet design. Now, the third gen Ryzen marks AMD's best performing processors right now, which means that it's faster and more efficient than previous Ryzen processors. It's a 6 core, 12 thread part with a base clock of 3.6 and max boost of 4.2 gigahertz. Now, AMD had a few hiccups with Ryzen 3000 at launch, but with more recent updates, the Sand has gotten a lot more stable. Nowadays you see this processor nearing its boost clock more frequently. Now higher frequencies is important as games still typically benefit a bit more for high clock speeds and IPC than higher core count. And speaking of instructions per cycle, Sen2 has gotten a nice IPC boost over the last gen Ryzen and it's more or less on par with Intel processors who has been dominating in the gaming department for many years now. Now for those looking to upgrade, if two years ago you you bought an affordable B350 motherboard and say the Ryzen 5 1600 or the Ryzen 1500 for example, you now have the option of slotting in the 3600 for up to 35% performance boost in games. Now the Core i5 9400F from Intel is the closest that the blue team offers. This is priced around $140 and can also be a great alternative. And if we put the 9400F against the Ryzen 3600, it is a very close battle. Now the Intel Core i5 is whoever lacking hyper threading, which gives the Ryzen an extra edge. Having 6 extra threads and more cash will definitely help in heavy CPU dependent games. This is in my opinion the perfect balance between price and performance. Again, against the 9400F, the Ryzen 3600 is better when it comes to core heavy games and applications, they currently cost a little bit more. And a side note here is that the 3600 also comes with a cooler and it's a pretty decent one as well. And so for under $200 this doesn't get any better than this. If you have this much to spend guys, this is what you want to spend it on. And speaking of Intel, coming in on place 3, I ended up with the 9400F. Now with Intel's 9th generation, there is still no denying that the blue team is still undisputed when it comes to raw gaming performance. At least one will look at the most popular current games out there right now. Though it should be said that even though the Core i5 9400F beats most of the red team's lineup right now, there are a few examples here where a 
AMD is the better choice, but it comes down to specific gaming titles. With that said, if you're on a tight budget and you want the cheapest yet the fastest processor that the blue team is offering, the 9400 with its 6 core and 6 threads will definitely do the trick for you. I stand against the main competitor, the Ryzen 3600, we can see that the 9400 wins in many games, but again, not by a whole lot. And if you put a PC with the 3600 processor right next to a machine with a 9400 running the same game without having an FPS meter to keep track of real-time FPS numbers, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between them. And while the 9400F is cheaper, it doesn't come with a cooler, so in case you don't have one, you have to consider that as well. I actually made a video a few days ago testing Arctic's latest liquid cooler for under $60. It's a very interesting cooler. you find a video down in the video description. Now the F suffix at the end means that the processor is lacking built-in graphics, so that is something that you want to be aware of. And because it doesn't have the famous K suffix at the end, it means that it's locked down, so overclocking won't be an option here. But yeah, for $150, considering the high IPC, the core count and the high frequency, it can be a great alternative if you're still sitting on an Intel system and you don't really want to make the jump over to AMD just yet. We're gonna stay with Intel for a bit longer, coming in on place 2 is the 9600K. This is one of the top performing and cheapest Intel offering that supports overclocking. Now, the 9600K is based on Intel's Coffee Lake at 12 nanometer plus plus. It is still Skylake, but with the addition of two extra cores, which makes this generation one of the more interesting ones in a long time. This one's got six cores and six threads, and no hyper threading. But unlike AMD's offerings, who is slightly slower clocked, this one's got a base clock of 3.7 and boost of 4.6 gigahertz. Now another major selling point with the 9th gen is that Intel is now finally soldering the AHS or heat spreader onto the processor again. This is a relatively expensive process which also poses some challenges but because a soldered IHS can generate lower and more stable temps generated from the CPU core in opposite of gluing it, soldering the heat spreader remains the best solution. This is becoming increasingly important as processors are getting more and more transistors and so it becomes more difficult to dissipate the heat quickly enough and the solution that is for Intel processors in the past has been to delete the processor but the fact that Intel is now switching to a soldered heat spreader means that the processor would run cooler at standard speed but also at overclocking and so for overclocking enthusiasts and performance hunters in search for high clock frequencies deleting shouldn't therefore be necessary this time and at $200 this is a brilliant budget processors if you don't want to make the jump over to AMD just yet. And yeah finally on place 1 we find the Ryzen 5 3400G and this one's got both the graphics chip and the CPU chip under the hood and for $150 thanks to the inclusion of SMT and 8 threads makes this a massive difference and well worth the extra $40 over the 3200G or $50 actually which can also be an option here if your budget is very limited though you want to be aware of the fact that the 3200G is lacking SMT or hyper threading. Yeah, the Ryzen 5 3400G is a 4 core and 8 thread part based on the Sun Plus architecture. This is still based on the 12 nanometer process and this is not the 30 and Ryzen Sun 2 that you've been waiting for but it's still a very competent APU. It manages to score pretty good in most eSport games but running AAA titles is rather a struggle on this one so definitely something that you want to have in mind in case you want to run AAA titles. I recommend looking at other alternatives but for entry level gaming this can be a brilliant choice. In case you're wondering Intel has nothing to offer in this category but yeah at 90 bucks you can also snag the AMD Ryzen 3200E and the slightly faster 3400G comes in at around $140. Now $50 difference to get SMT and slightly faster iGPU is something to think about but if your budget allows it I would rather pick the 3400G in the end. If you aren't limited to a budget I also made a video covering the best processor available right now in early 2020 and you find that video down in the video description. In the meantime I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions let me know in the comments below. Until next time have an awesome day right?